सदाशिव सरंभा शंकराचार्यमध्यमा अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा ओ सहना सहनौ भुन सह वीर करवाह तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तुमाशावह शांति 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 हरि ओ श्रीगुरभ्यो नम हरि ओ so this is our third class and uh, we have gone through in the first class the importance of geeta in the literature that we have so we have the that particular uh, topic covered in the first class in the second class that is the last class we have covered the importance or introduction to the geeta what is the setting of the geeta when the um when geeta was told by uh, shri krishna to the student arjuna and also how geeta came out into the open <clears throat> had it been told only krishna to arjuna and nobody was there to hear except arjuna neither krishna nor arjuna would have been interested in printing this chapter yeah so this particular thing is more in terms of vedavyas ji giving that uh, power that divya chakshu as i mentioned the divine eyes to sanjaya because he actually gave it to uh, dhritarashtra the king of uh, hastinapura but uh, he in his uh, pride said no no i don't require it because i know who is going to win if you want give it to sanjaya and he is good enough i don't require to have this divine chakshu so anyway he it was given to sanjaya and sanjaya in turn uh, started listening to the um, geeta how it came about we said was when on the 10th day of the war when bhishma fell which nobody expected in the kaurava team nobody expected only krishna knew what is required to be done how to bring him down so bhishma fell on the 10th day and when that news reached dhritarashtra <clears throat> he was interested in knowing how this came about because he never expected that bhishma somebody can kill bhishma he didn't die you know he just fell down with uh, uh, on a bed of arrows in fact the arrows that uh, arjuna sent on bhishma when he was uh, not holding his own uh, bow and arrow uh, were so powerful that they went through the body and when when bhishma fell he fell as if on the bed of arrows so how difficult how painful it should have been to bhishma pitamaha who is a old man by that time we can imagine but he didn't want to die on that particular time because it was uh, not uttarayana it is still in dakshinayana portion of the 10th day when he fell then he had to wait some say 50 days some say 96 days and he waited for the start of uttarayana period that is the sankranti as we normally we say in the south that particular time around january 14 15 navadays at that time we don't know when it was depending upon when it happened this particular thing happened and he waited for uttarayana to come and then he uh, when pandava everybody went there krishna also was there uh, there, there are, the story goes on yeah that he willfully gave up because that is the boon that he had ishtam ichchamaranam 
So he, when he wants to die only, he will die. So he waited for Uttarayana to start and he gave up his life at that time. Anyway, this is a side story. Interesting story because people do and uh, ask as to why if we cannot choose our time of death. So if somebody dies in Dakshinayana, what does it mean? So it's only symbolical way. And uh, this we mentioned in previous other Upanishad classes as well. Um, is more in terms of Uttarayana, Dakshinayana is more in terms of our lifestyles. Uttarayana, Uttara means uh, upward journey. Upward journey is more towards moksha. So if somebody is in the path of jnana, he is in the path of Uttarayana. Somebody who is in path of karma, he is in the path of uh, Dakshinayana. Dakshina represents karma. Uttara direction, north direction represents the knowledge. So somebody on Uttarayana means he got the jnana. So Bhishma possibly felt at that particular time that he required more time to gain the knowledge about the scriptures. Uh, uh, not very correct in terms of many people who knew Bhishma Pitamaha. He is a board of knowledge anyway. But he waited for Krishna to come to him and spend some time towards the end. And in the presence of Krishna, he left his um, pran. So like that, we should be thinking of Uttarayana, Dakshinayana, not literally. From January, if you die till June, it is, uh, uh, you will go to Swarga, but uh, from June to December, you will go to Naraka and thing like that. So heaven and hell are not decided by that. There are other measures as to how and when people will reach. Okay. Anyway, that is the uh, background for the Gita coming into the open. Sanjay is the one who starts telling it to Dhritarashtra. On the 11th day approximately or 10th day night we can say, but mostly they say 11th day is the one when Dhritarashtra asks Sanjaya to go back and see. Because not only Sanjaya can see, as I mentioned, he can actually rewind. Rewind the tape and look from day one. Because this happened on day one of the war. But Sanjaya is seeing on day 11 of the war. So he not only had the vision to see, the divine vision allowed him to rewind and start from the day one, uh, uh, zero time, when the war started. At that particular time, how it happened, what it happened, Dhritarashtra wanted to know very clearly what happened in the war. So Gita is only part of that. Yeah? When the war started, it is only part of that particular this one. Possibly the vision of Sanjaya will cover the 10 days till Bhishma is uh, dead, etc., etc. But that is not our uh, theme or the topic. We are looking at when Krishna gave this knowledge to the uh, Arjuna. We also mentioned in the as an introduction to the Gita, chapter 1, although it is called Arjuna Vishada Yoga. So normally Vishada Yoga uh, means uh, somebody who is sad. The sadness of Arjuna, yoga. How that can be a yoga? If you really see, it's very difficult for us to understand how this is named. So yoga doesn't mean only in terms of meditation or something. The yoga is in terms of the aspects that we would like to learn out of this. We want to combine with that knowledge to know what is there in this. So Arjuna Vishada, here the Vishada represents the samsara. Because samsara itself is nothing but uh, sadness. And uh, a mixture of uh, sadness, uh, our Dayan Saraswati used to say, Dukhi and Sukhi. Sukhi is enjoyment. Dukhi is the uh, sadness associated with samsara. Normally what happens, it is a, a cycle that happens. So sometimes we are Dukhi, then we become Sukhi, then becomes Dukhi, then become Sukhi. If your life is Sukhi, 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 Dukhi, life is good for you. But if your life is Sukhi, Dukhi, 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 and then Sukhi, we have a big problem with our life, which is our normal way of living. Day-to-day -day basis, we become more Dukhi than think about we are Sukhi. So Arjuna Vishada Yoga is representation of this samsara. When a person becomes, uh, because of the uh, desire that one has for the outside objects and outside objects are elusive by nature, automatically when we depend on that for our happiness, you are bound to become Dukhi. 
or the sadness overcomes very often because you are depending on other people to give you happiness, other objects to give you happiness. And that is the reason why you end up with a, 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 a dukkha associated with this. And once you get that sorrow, if the sorrow overwhelms you, your mind is not trained properly, then that overwhelming sorrow will lead you something called delusion. And in delusion, our mind stops working and we take all wrong decisions, which to us definitely appears to be very correct decision that I'm taking at that particular time. But ultimately, that will any decision that you take out of delusion will only end up with more sorrow and more delusion. So this particular chapter, chapter one, talks about this samsara. Arjuna, you will see, goes through the cycle of the attachment leading to sorrow, leading to delusion, leading Arjuna to take all kinds of wrong decisions despite the background that he has for the start of this particular war. Okay. So this we have covered and we have also read the verse 1 which Sanjaya heard um, from Dhritarashtra to start with. So verse 1 of chapter 1, Arjuna, Arjuna Vishada Yoga. So that already we read that. That is Dhritarashtra Uvacha Dharma Kshetre Kuru Kshetre Samaveta Yuyutsavaha Mamaka Pandavas Chaiva Kimakurvata Sanjaya. So here the Gita starts with the blind king Dhritarashtra asking Sanjaya as to Kim, what did Mamakaha, Mamakaha, my people, what did my people Cha Eva Pandava? So, and also the Pandavas. Pandavas are the the sons of Pandu. Pandu is the younger brother of Dhritarashtra. So he started talking about Mamakaha, my people. Although, as I mentioned in the last class, the story goes that uh, the Pandavas and Kauravas both were brought up by Dhritarashtra because Pandu died very early despite being the king. So the Dhritarashtra being blind could not become the king despite being the eldest son. So he, uh, he brought these people up and he became kind of a regent, a representative king um, waiting for uh, the sons of Pandu to come to age so that he should hand over the kingdom to the eldest son of Pandu because Pandu is the real king. That is the dharma which is there. But uh, as it happens, the Dhritarashtra being blind by mind got carried away and he says Duryodhana and other Kauravas. There were hundred sons of Dhritarashtra, uh, eldest being the Duryodhana and that Duryodhana should become the king is what he thought and that led to the entire war between the cousins. Not only cousins, the all the relatives, whoever is there from the Pandava side, from the Kaurava side and all the other kings who were supporting each, they had to take a, a choice between these two and they all came about fighting each other. And uh, uh, one interesting fact was, which we discussed last time was Krishna. When uh, Duryodhana and Arjuna went for asking for Krishna's help to join their side because Krishna is uh, related to both of them. And uh, Krishna says that, okay, I will, I will join you in terms of my participation, but I will not take up arms. I will not fight the war. I will only be there to help you people by giving advice. So Arjuna selects Krishna and he says, Krishna says, divides himself on one side. He will be there without fighting, without arms. And his entire Narayani Sena will be on the other side and fight the war. So Duryodhana was very happy to get that army, not thinking that Krishna is the balancing factor. Uh, having Krishna on the one side, already war is won. And Arjuna knew that and selected him. 
And the story of uh, Mahabharata goes into so many details as to what all things that uh, uh, Duryodhana and his team, including Shakuni, etc., did to the Pandavas. So many um, uh, aspects where, where they tried to burn their house, uh, where they are there, they cheated in the game and then made them go into um, Aranyavasa and uh, Agnyatavasa, etc., etc. So they have, they have, they were after these people. They even tried to poison uh, Bhima. So all types of things are done, but where Krishna is there, where Dharma is there, protection is prote provided to all these people. Okay. Now, so um, in the first uh, this one, where, where Mamakaha, my people, and Pandava. They were asking Yuyutsavaha, who were eager to fight. Samaveta. They all came together, they assembled together. Dharma Kshetre, Kurukshetre. This, this holy land of Kurukshetra. Even now we have Kurukshetra in I think Haryana or somewhere, where they have ident there is an identified uh, land where this uh, war is supposed to have happened. There is a tree there which represents the Bhagavad Gita. Even now it is there. You people can go there and they say this this uh, that particular plant, tree is there for last 5,000 years since the Gita happened. It's a representation kind of a thing. yeah. But anyway, so that holy land of Kurukshetra is where the war is taking place. And it is far away from Hastinapura. Hastinapura where uh, Dhritarashtra is sitting. These people are there and two armies have assembled to fight with each other. Duryodhana's army, because Duryodhana is representative of Dhritarashtra there. Yeah? So Duryodhana's army is very powerful, both in terms of quantity, in terms of quality. Both ways that he there is Dhritarashtra, Duryodhana's army was very powerful compared to Pand Pandava's army, where uh, it is there, but less number of people. The only person who makes the difference is Lord Krishna, who became the Sarathi, the charioteer of Arjuna. He agreed to imagine Lord Krishna becoming a charioteer, sitting in front and at the back of the horses and uh, going through all types of uh, unimaginable uh, things that he had to go through and all that he did for Arjuna's sake. Because he has chosen him over the others. Being there, you know, he protected Arjuna through and through. What they say at the end of the war, when uh, war was completed, declared over, when Arjuna was about to say, Krishna, you get down. Krishna says, no, 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 you get down first. He made Arjuna get down. And when he got down, the whole chariot fell through. The, he was protecting as long as Krishna was there, chariot was there. As long as Krishna was there, Arjuna was protected because of that. So that's how they say that Arjuna, Krishna's role was very key in terms of doing that. Okay. Now, he will go to the Sanjaya starts talking. So Arjuna has already spoken. Uh, sorry, Dhritarashtra has already spoken. And now, Sanjaya Uvacha. Uvacha means uh, Sanjaya says. So, Sanjaya Uvacha Drushtva tu Pandava Nikam Vyudham Duryodhana Stada Acharya Mupasangyamya Raja Vachanam Abhravit. So Sanjaya Uvacha. Sanjaya started talking. What did he say? He saw that uh, Drushtvatu, having seen Pandavanikam. Pandavanikam, Anikam means army. So Pandavanikam, the army of the Pandavas. What did they do? Vyudham. Yudham is a, a particular arrangement that army makes up. Yeah. So he is who has seen this particular thing? Raja. Raja Duryodhan. Duryodhana is being referred to as a Raja here. Yeah. 
because from the Kaurava side, he is the one who is the king there representing uh, Dhritarashtra. What did he do? Upasangamya Acharyavan. Acharyam Upasangyam. Since he went closer, he approached Acharya. Who is this Acharya? The Acharya is Dronacharya. Dronacharya happens to be the teacher uh, of uh, not normal teacher, but teacher who taught the warfare to both Pandavas and Kauravas. As I told you, both of them came up, came up together. They were brought up together. And all of them went to the same Dronacharya and Bhishma is the one who selected Dronacharya and made him to come, uh, made him teach the warfare and other uh, sciences to uh, both the Kauravas represented by the hundred uh, Kauravas and five Pandavas. All of them went there. So Duryodhana approached uh, this particular uh, Dronacharya Abravit. Abravit, he spoke. What did he say? Vachanam, these words, Tada. So at that time, uh, Raja Duryodhana approached Dronacharya and having seen the armies of Pandavas, how they are arrayed, etc. Duryodhana approached Dronacharya and spoke these words at that time. That's what the second verse says. Okay. So what did he say? Verse 1.3. Pashay Tampandu Putranam. Pashay Tampandu Putranam. Putrena. So he, he addressed uh, Dronacharya as Acharya, O teacher. O teacher, see, Pashya. Pashya means see. See, what did what he wants him to see? Etan Mahati Chamum. Means this vast army that is there in front of you, Panduputrana. Whose army is that? Their army of the Panduputra, the, the sons of Pandu. Vyudham. Arid means in the various arrangements that they have made. Drupada Putrena. Drupada is the character which is there. I will slightly explain that particular this one because unless we do that, we don't understand what is the significance of this particular uh, verse. Yeah. Drupada Putrena, there is the Drupada character, and his son is the one Tava Dhimata Sishena. Your skillful disciple, Dhimata can be intelligent, skillful, um, a person of uh, repute. He is the one who is there, skillful. And who is that? Sishyena. Tava Sishyena. Your own Sishya. So he is actually kind of taunting the uh, teacher, telling that you have actually trained this particular person. And now see, he has become so skillful that he has formed this army in, in front of you. And he is trying to kill you. He is trying to attack you. So it is because of you that he is there in front of you. Kind of pushing that particular. Why he said this particular thing? Because even if you see, even Pandavas are trained by the same Dronacharya. Even Kauravas are trained by the same Dronacharya. He has trained many people. But he also trained this Drupadaputra uh, in terms of this particular thing. The reason why he is talking about is this but this character of Drupada Putra is called uh, Drushtra Drumya. Drushtra Dumya. Yeah? This Drushtra Dumya character Drushtra Dumna. Drushtra Okay. Manjulaji is correcting. Drushtra Dumya. Okay. So this particular uh, character comes about Drona and this uh, uh, Drupada both were um, kind of uh, uh, learning the art of warfare and other stuff through their guru, who is who happens to be Dronacharya's father, Bharadwaj, Rishi Bharadwaj. So the Dhru Drupada comes and he is a he is a prince. He comes and he starts learning from Bharadwaj, Sage Bharadwaj. 
And obviously, Drona Acharya also is learning from his own father. Like Ashwadhamma, son of Drona, learns from Drona. While uh, Kauravas and Pandavas are learning, his own son also joins them, kind of. Yeah. So Drona joined the uh, Drupada uh, in, terms of, uh, in terms of the learning. So he's a co-student. He's a brother, like this one. While they are together, Drupada kind of becomes emotionally attached to this uh, Drona and they become very good friends. And he says, whatever I get in my life, I will share with you 50%. I will give you that. I don't know why he said that, but he said that as a friend, like any young boy got carried away and he says that. And when the time comes, when uh, Drupada goes and he becomes the king, Drona is very, um, very poor, uh, a poor Brahmin family as such. So he goes and he demands, you promise me to give me half of that. Now that you became a king, give me half the kingdom. Now Drona, that Drupada becomes, uh, says, no, no, <laughs> don't be impractical like this. I might have told just like that. Doesn't mean that I will really give you. If you require some food and all, I can give, but not definitely half of my kingdom. Sorry. So when that happens, Drupa, Drona becomes very angry. He says, no, no, no. You have already given me word. You are going back on this word. So I will not leave you. What happens after the Pandavas and Kauravas are trained properly in terms of warfare, when they come and ask them as to what should be my Guru Dakshana, I should give you. Drona says, you go and defeat this uh, Drupada and bring me half of that kingdom. Now, what this is, it, the story goes that first Kauravas goes there to fight with uh, Drupada and they could not uh, defeat him. They come back defeated. Whereas when pa five Pandavas then go, uh, Arjuna and uh, others, they manage to defeat Drupada. Not only he ties them and he brings them in front of Drona. Drona demeans him like well, how he did that. And then he says that, give me half the kingdom and balance half you keep, and Drona keeps half the kingdom. Drupada becomes very angry with Drona, but unfortunately he couldn't do anything because he is uh, uh, not powerful enough, with, especially with the support of Pandavas, Kauravas, the entire Kuru dynasty is behind Dronacharya, so he couldn't do anything. So he, he started do, doing a yajna, in which the only thing that he was asking was, give me a son who will kill this Drona. And in that particular yajna, at the end of it, when it gets completed successfully, the, the now I have a problem, Drishtadimnya actually <laughs> comes out with the, from the fire. He comes out uh, and he is the one who actually is known to uh, be there only to kill Drona. He knows that. And as a one, uh, you ask for one, one comes free. Nowadays that is there. When with this Drishtadamnya, even the Draupadi also walks out of that fire. And the Draupadi finally gets married to the Pandavas and becomes kind of a reason for the entire war to happen. Uh, with her own uh, words, she takes up some vows, etc. Ultimately, she leads the, to this particular war where Drishtadamnya managed to kill Drona. So that is the background. Now imagine such a son that Drupada got and Drupada says, who is the best teacher who can teach him to kill Drona? He says, Drona is the only one who can teach him. So he sends him to Drona. Now the dharma of the teacher is that when a appropriate qualified student comes to you, you cannot refuse but to teach him everything that you know. Although not everything, but taking under him and teaching whatever he can is part of the dharma as a teacher. Drona knowing fully well that he will kill him ultimately, that is his vow, whether he manages or not, doesn't know. But it came out of the fire. Yeah, He is not an ordinary person. So very likely he knew that he will ultimately kill him. But still he taught him everything that he knew. That is what Dharma Kshetre, Kurukshetre is all about. 
as long as dharma was maintained in that particular war, everything was good. Moment when the son of Arjuna gets killed, that is when the dharma went out of the war and it became a bloodbath. After that, we will see that when it comes to that particular thing, possibly we will look at that particular thing. Yeah. So this is the background for the taunting that Duryodhana is telling Dronacharya. Telling that you are the one who taught. You don't require to teach him, but you did that and you created such a skillful warrior. He became the Pandavas army's army chief. He is made because they knew that he has been trained by Drona equal to Pandavas and Kauravas, maybe more because he, he is a special person who came in only to kill such a warrior as Dronacharya. So that with that he says, oh teacher, see this vast army of Pandavas arrayed by the son of Drupada, your skillful disciple. Okay. So this is the background for the third verse where uh, Drona is kind of, uh, but it also talks about what is the uh, thinking process of uh, Duryodhana. He knew possibly this particular story, but just when the war is about to begin, Dronacharya is one of your key, war key warriors that you have and you go and taunt him and tell him that you are a foolish fellow. You taught your own uh, enemy where he will kill you. So he's kind of pushing him to that particular, mm -hmm. which actually talks about more about the um, Duryodhana's mindset as to how he thinks about this particular aspect, which is there. Okay. And then he, Dronacharya, then survey the Pandava army, etc., etc. We have seen already. He continues to uh, name a few warriors from the Pandava side now. Why he is doing that? Because he is identifying those special warriors who are there and his own mind, he is actually becoming fearful. Despite the fact that he has got Bhishma, Dronacharya and so many other Karna, so many warriors are there with him. But he is afraid. He is still not sure about the um, win that he will have or he can have. So he started looking at the uh, uh, warriors, the strong warriors at the uh, Pandava side and he will be naming a few. He will also name few warriors from the Kaurava side who are the key people who are there and he says this particular verse 4. Yeah. Atra Shura Maheshwasaha Bhima Arjuna Samayudhi Bhima Arjuna Samayudhi Yuyudhano Viratascha Yuyudhano Viratascha Drupadascha Maharadha Drupadascha Maharadha So this Atra, Atra means in this army of Pandavas, obviously he is referring to the Pandavas army. Shuraha Maheshwasaha Maheshwasa uh, Ishwasa means uh, it is the uh, the one who is bow and arrow. Uh, archers is the Ishwasa. Maheshwasa, one who is holding the uh, very strong, powerful archers are there on the other side. He is seeing them. Yeah? Maheshwasa. There are many powerful archers on the other side. Equal to Bhima and Arjuna. Equal to Bhima and Arjuna. Bhima, Arjuna, Samaha. Samaha equivalent to them. So almost equivalent to them. There are so many warriors who are lined up on the other side. So he is now trying to say who they are. Yudhi. Yudhi in the war. Yuyudhana. Yuyudhana is the name, uh, again, uh, name of the person called Satyaki. Satyaki is also known as Yuyudhana. And this particular Satyaki is the one, actually he survives the war. Yeah, one of the few people who survived the war is Satchaki. And Krishna recognizes him to be such a great warrior. He says that he can actually take up uh, the entire Kaurava army on his own. He is that powerful, is how he recognizes him. Yeah? He is this Satchaki. So he talks about Satchaki, but he uses the word of Yuyudhan. Yeah? Uh, 
Yuyudhana uh, Satyaki Virataschya. Virata king, you know, when uh, when the when uh, the people of uh, uh, Pandavas go for this Ajnatavasa, where they have to live for one year without uh, being recognized by anybody. If they do that, they will have to go through the 14 years again. That was the rule that 12 plus 13 years again. Mm -hmm. That was the um, uh, thing that they agreed when they lost the game with uh, Kauravas. So this particular Virata Raja is where the Pandavas go and spend their that one year in Ajnata in, without be getting recognized. So Bhima becomes a cook, Arjuna becomes a uh, Brihannala. Uh, half woman, uh, half man, and uh, Nakula Sahadeva, they go into uh, looking after cows and horses, horses, etc. And uh, uh, Yudhishthira becomes the advisor to the king. So that is how they hide uh, and spend that one year with Virata. And uh, anyway, so that particular uh, Virata king, um, he was under the uh, uh, under the uh, what what to put it um, who is that Kichaka so Kichaka is the brother-in-law of this Virata and Kichaka was very powerful Rakshasa he is actually towards more towards like uh, Duryodhana but Bhima challenges and kills that particular person so Virata becomes kind of free to be real king otherwise he was being overshadowed by the powerful Rakshasa called Kichaka and Bhima kills him during that Ajnatavasa because that Kichaka comes after Draupadi. Draupadi becomes a servant for the queen, etc. So this is the story that goes and that is the reason why Virat Raja who would have fought for Duryodhana now starts fighting for Pandavas with that background. Now he is also a great king and great uh, Maharatha, Maharatha and we already talked about Drupada. Drupada obviously trained by along with Dronacharya is equivalent to Dronacharya, although less in terms of the powers, because obviously maybe the sage Bharadvaja gave a bit more training to Drona rather than to Drupada, for all we know. Yeah. But he is a great warrior. Maharathaha is the great warrior that uh, is there. This Maharathaha uh, is defined at some other places, like uh, one. A person who can um, take care of uh, 10,000 warriors from the other side becomes a Maharatha. One who can fight almost 10,000 warriors becomes a Maharatha. And there are gradations. There is a Atiratha, there is a half uh, Ratha, etc. Uh, etc. Et Atiratha is greater than Maharatha. Atiratha can take care of 60,000 warriors at the same time. There are the Maha Atiradhas are there in our uh, Puranas and this one. That Maha Atiradhas, uh, the people who are considered Maha Atiradhas are uh, Rama, Krishna, Parushurama, Indrajit and Hanuma. These are the five who can take care of uh, more than the endless kind of uh, warriors. Whoever comes in front of them have to be killed. Only way the Indrajit got killed because Rama and Lakshmana came together. And uh, Vibhishana was there to support them. And that is the only reason why Indrajit could be eliminated in Rama. Different, uh, this one we see. But these five are the, in our uh, Itihasa history, are considered to be the five greatest warriors ever in Bharata, Desha, so to say. Okay. So this Maharatha, they all, uh, they are there. And uh, he says this particular, so many warriors are all there. Drupada is there in front of that. And not only that, there are more people who are in front of the uh, Kaurava army ready to fight with them. Okay. 1.5, we will read. Drushta ketus chekitanaha Drushta ketus chekitanaha Kashi rajas chaviryavan Kashi rajas chaviryavan 
पुरु जित कुंती बोजस्च पुरु जित कुंती बोजस्च सैभ्यस्च नरपुंगवः सैभ्यस्च नरपुंगवः सो ही कंटिन्यूअस नेमिंग द अदर्स या दृष्ट केतु हु चेकिताना हा सो दी दीस टू आर अगेन पावरफुल किंग्स वो आर देयर कैरेक्टर्स वो चार देयर सो बोथ आर कैरेक्टर्स अगेन देयर महारथास वो आर देयर वी नीड नॉट टेल and we also talks about a powerful king of kashi kashi rajyasya kashi rajyasya viryavan viryavan is not a name it is a kind of a uh, powerful king of kashi so we didn't get the name of that particular person and Pur puruji and kunti bhoja and ending with saibhyasya who is the best among the men so these are all kings who are assembled in front of him yeah um so drishtaketur chekitanah see the the idea was that uh, in ramayana you have all the uh, king clans which are called suryavamshi they are the belonging to the suryavamsham or the sun's uh, representative Uh, in the earth, on the earth, God says, "Surya Vamsi." Now we have in uh, in uh, the uh, in the time of Mahabharata war, all the Pandavas, Kauravas, etc. They are all Chandra Vamsi. They are the moon's uh, representatives, kind of here in the uh, on the earth. They are Surya Vamsis. But there are a few Surya Vamsis who are still there, and one of them is called Sishupala. So Sishupala is a Surya Vamsi king who was uh, ruling somewhere in Nagpur area, let us say, in that particular area in middle of the India. He used to be there. Now this uh, Drishtaketu and his son Chekitana, they belong to the Surya Vamsi kings, and they supported Pandavas. Nobody expected that because Sishupala was a uh, kind of a uh, enemy for. Uh, krishna but still the sons of them and his son they supported pandavas and they came towards this and duryodhana obviously didn't like that so he is actually putting that particular two names specifically to say that although they belong to surya vamsha and they they are enemies of krishna they actually are supporting now see and they are on the other side and he is uh, looking at them and telling them about it. maybe because of rukmini yeah Maybe because of Rukmini is the this one. Maybe uh, it's not told, so we don't know exactly why they are. But they have this is the background for those two names for coming here. And uh, Purujit, Purujit and Kunti Bhoja, Purujit and Kunti Bhoja. These are the Kunti. Kunti is uh, Pandava's mother, and uh, these two are supposed to be brothers of Kunti. Who came? Obviously, they are supporting Pandavas, so they are being named here: Purujit, Kunti, Bhojascha, Saibhyascha, Narapungava. Saibhya is the another one. Saibhya is the father-in-law of Yudhishthira, the eldest Pandava. His um, uh, father-in-law is this Saibhya. So Saibhyascha. So he is identified all these best among men. They are all assembled here. in front of the kuru um, uh, kuru army kaurava army yeah okay more powerful kings also is mentioned in uh, verse 1.6 we will read that um, we will read that as well yeah युधामनुष्य विक्रांतः युधामनुष्य विक्रांतः उत्तमाउजास्य वीर्यवान उत्तमाउजास्य वीर्यवान सौभद्रो द्रौपदे यास्य सौभद्रो द्रौपदे यास्य सर्वयेव महारथाः सर्वयेव महारथाः So here again, so a few more names have been given here. Yudhamanyu, Yudhamanyu, Vikranta. So he is a powerful Yudhamanyu, and 
Viryavan Uttamaujas Cha. Uttamaujas and uh, Yudhamanyu. One is defined as Vikranta, other is defined as Viryavan. Both are very lent, very powerful, very uh, skillful warriors who are there. These two are also named in terms of this. Yeah. And Saubhadra. Saubhadra is the Subhadra's son becomes Saubhadra. Yeah. So Subhadra is Abhimanyu. Arjuna's uh, wife is Subhadra and Arjuna, uh, Abhimanyu is son of Arjuna. So he, his name is there and sons of Draupadi. Draupadeya, Draupadeya. So sons of Draupadi. So Draupadi is married to all five Pandavas. Through each one, he has one one son. So all of them are Draupadeyas. Draupadeyaha. All are assembled here. Sarve Yevam Maharatha. All of them are great warriors. So he is now tell, told about some 20 names he has taken in terms of telling that all these warriors are in front of you, led by your skillful disciple, whom you know will kill you or whom you know is uh, supposed to kill you and you have trained him. This is how the uh, Duryodhana talked about the Pandava army. He did not take names of uh, Yudhishthira, Bhima, Arjuna, Ak Nakula, Sahadeva. The five Pandavas who are there, that names is not there. Obviously, they are the main warriors on the other side. But uh, Dronacharya, he did not... Uh, he did not tell these names to Dronacharya. He has taken all the other five, so many names which are there associated with this. Yeah. I, I, when I was going through the Mahabharata war, when this happened, etc. What I found was either these people whom he named, either the people who survived the war, like Satyaki, he, did, he was uh, not killed in the this one. Or the others like uh, King of uh, Virata, Virata's king which is there, he was killed by Drona. Drupadaha is killed by Drona. And uh, uh, the uh, Drishtiketu and Chekitana both of them are again killed by Drona. And uh, Yudhumanyu and Uttama Jasav, both of them, they are killed by Ashwadham. Oh. And the 18th uh, day, when after the killing of Duryodhana, when the war is over, so li literally speaking, they survived the war. Yudhamanyu and Uttama Jasav, both of them survived the war in that sense. But uh, uh, the Ashwatthama, son of Drona, he is very, very uh, sad that uh, Drona was killed by um, that uh, uh, the, the Pandavas in a cunning way. Dronacharya can never be defeated by any one of these warriors. And the dharma of the war, war is that you can, you can face only one to one. You have to fight. Not all of them come together and fight. So in order to kill Dronacharya, uh, they make uh, the Yudhishthira tell kind of a lie, half lie. Bhima goes and kills a elephant named Ashwadham. And Duryo, the, the Yudhishthira comes toward Drona and as if he is talking to others, he says that Ashwadhama got killed and and he, in the low tone, he says, Kunjaraha, that means actually elephant. But Dronacharya thinks if uh, Yudhishthira is telling, he will never lie. He takes for that as a granted and he gives up his weapons, thinking that, oh, my son got killed in the war and he gives up his weapons and sits down. That is when the Dhrishtadimnyo goes and beheads him and kills that Dronacharya. So it is actually a bloodbath that happened and he was not killed in a proper way. So Ashwadhamma gets very angry 
that my father was not given appropriate uh, dharma in terms of his managing. So after the war was over and he goes and he goes on a kind of a, a, a bloodbath in the Pandava camp when everybody is sleeping in the night. As per the war of dharma at, at that time, after the sunset, no killing can take place. But he goes and he kills many people, including the five sons of Draupadi. They survive the war, but they get killed by this um, Ashwatthama. Similarly, Yudhaman, uh, uh, Yudhaman and uh, you, you, this person, he is also done, uh, killed by the same way. And even Shikhandi, who was, uh, who was uh, he also survives the war, but gets killed by Ashwatthama on the last day. After the war was over, in the night he goes and kills all these people. And it happens that all these 20 names that uh, Duryodhana has taken with them, most of them are killed by either Drona himself or his son Ashwatthama after the war was over and only person who survives that particular thing apart from Pandavas etc. is Satyaki who is mentioned here in the 20 names that we see we saw there. So he says that the, all these people are there may be a, a reason why Duryodhana took only those people's names in a, in a way to say that these are the people I am allocating for you to take out <laughs> in a way. Yeah. So maybe that is what the discussion was taking place at that time. It is not clear in terms of that. There are, if you go into the net and try to search, there are many questions as to why Duryodhana has taken only these few names. That question always comes in terms of uh, the discussions. Nobody knows. He says, no, no, he has just identified a few people. But it happens that either these names are either those people who survived the war but got killed by Ashwatthama in the night uh, on the 18th day after the war was over or a persons who, got, who survived that particular war. Couple of them only, not many. Yeah. Anyway, so this is what the verse 6 says. We will read the seventh verse now. Yeah. Asma kam tu visishtaye. Asma kam tu visishtaye. Tani bodha di jotama. Tani bodha di jotama. Nayaka mama sain yes ya. Sanyadham tan bravi mite. Sanyadham tan bravi mite. So, Dvijottama. Dvija, Dvijottama, the best among the twice born. Dvija is twice born. It's a, normally, Brahmins are referred to as Dvija because the idea is that uh, uh, when a Brahmin is there, initially he is just like any other person, but once he takes up the Jnana Marga, the knowledge path, he is born again, kind of. So, this uh, like born again Christian. So this is born again persons who are the called Brahmins and this Dvija. And uh, Dronacharya obviously is Dvija. is a Brahmin who trained all these people in warfare. Dvija Uttama, best among the uh, Brahmins. Nibodhata, Nibodhata, may you know. Those who are prominent. Uh, Visishta, Visishta, those who are very prominent. Asma Kamtu, among us. Now he is trying to identify similar great warriors on Kaurava side. So, Asma Kamtu, among us, Nayakaha, the leaders, Mama Sainyasya, my army. So, he is telling not our army, very clearly he says, my army. So, you also fight for me, remember that is a message that he is giving to Dronacharya in a way. Yeah? Bravi Mitan, Bravi Mitan, I am mentioning them to you, Te Sanyartham, just for your sake of your information, to let you know that not only they have the greatest warriors, we also have a list of warriors who are there with us. Yeah. So he is he kind of a he is now doing a, a, a kind of a thing. He is looking at how we can balance these two sides. Who has got the greatest uh, army? 
And obviously, Drona is one of the persons uh, who is there in terms of the great people that he will be talking about now. Okay. So he says, <clears throat> Bhavan. Okay. We will read the we'll read the last uh, verse now for today, and then we will stop with this. Yeah. Bhavan Bhishmascha Karnascha Bhavan Bhishmascha Karnascha Krupascha Samitinjaya Krupascha Samitinjaya Ashwadhama Vikarnascha Ashwadhama Vikarnascha Saumadattistha Dhaivacha Saumadattistha Dhaivacha So while naming the people on the Kaurava side, who are the greatest warriors again. So, although he went to Drona and started taunting him, etc., when he mentions who are the best warriors among Kuru dynasty, he starts with uh, Bhavan. Bhavan means yourself. You yourself is one of our uh, key warriors with us. And Bhishma, obviously Bhishma Pitamaha is the second warrior named in this. And Karna. Yeah, we all know the Karna. Karna is supposed to be the eldest son of Kunti, but she gives him up and he brought up by a charioter in uh, some odd place. But he learns um, the warfare. Uh, there are stories he comes to Drona. He says, I will not teach you because of your lower uh, Varna, etc., etc. Anyway, he also becomes a great warrior uh, despite all this uh, thing happening. And Karna, uh, when somebody, when they come, when Karna comes to uh, kind of uh, participate in a competition that was held for Kshatriyas, um, the person, the Drona, I think, uh, tells him that no, no, you cannot participate because you don't belong to Kshatriya Varna. So you cannot do that. Then Duryodhana gives him, makes him a king, king of Angarajya. And says, okay, if that is the only thing that is preventing him, I will give him Angarajya. And he becomes the king of that Angarajya. Anga is currently Bihar, around that area is Anga, Anga Pradesh. So he makes him the king of that, just like that. And he becomes a Kshatriya. And Karna becomes kind of a slave for Duryodhana after that. Yeah, he, he, is, a, he is a friend. But more than a friend, he is a slave. He can never say no to Duryodhana because of what he did in front of everybody. Yeah? Krupa is the another one. Krupa Samitinjaya. Samitinjaya means always victorious in war. Krupa can never be defeated, kind of. And it happens, Krupa is one of, like uh, Krishna mentioned about uh, the uh, Satyaki, here, Krupa is like that. So, Krupa also survives the war. One of the few people who survived the war, this Krupacharya is one of them. Yeah? He is ever victorious in the war, is how it, he is being told. Ashwadhama, Ashwadhama, son of uh, Dronacharya, we have already seen Ashwadhama, and Vikarnacha. Sometimes people say, why Vikarna's name came? Because he is not a great warrior, neither anything like that. But it happens that, again, go back to the story. Uh, Vikarna is one of the two Kauravas, princes, who actually is not very happy the way Pandavas were defeated in the game of uh, dice, which they play, which ultimately results in uh, Draupadi getting dragged into this one and uh, derobing her and Krishna uh, saving her, etc., etc., only Vikarna is one of them who actually opposed that. He says, this is Adharma. You cannot do this to the uh, lady in the this one. So he is, uh, he is identified as one of those uh, persons. Maybe that's why he, Duryodhana remembered him when he saw. This guy is actually <laughs> told against me, but still he is fighting for me. So he kind of a recognition to that particular thing, I think. And Somadatta, and son of the Somadatta, these are the people in our heart. So we will stop here. It's 8.30 and we'll take up from verse 9 in the next class.
ಪೂರ್ಣಮದ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಿದ ಪೂರ್ಣಾತ್ ಪೂರ್ಣಮುದಚ್ಯತೆ ಪೂರ್ಣಸ್ಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಾಧಾಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಾವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓಂ